Hijama, Wikipedia Audio Hijama is the alternative medical procedure an Arabic term for wet cupping, where blood is drawn by vacuum from a small skin incision for therapeutic purposes. Cupping is poorly supported by scientific evidence. Whether cupping has any effect at all, even on pain is supported at best by tentative evidence. Any reported benefits are likely due to the placebo effect. The practice has Greek, Arab, Turkish, and Persian origin and is mentioned by Hippocrates. It is reported that the Islamic prophet Muhammad said, Indeed the best of remedies you have is hijama, and if there was something excellent to be used as a remedy then it is hijama. Hijama can be performed almost anywhere on the body often at the site of an ache or pain in order to ease or alleviate it. A more conservative approach warns against overuse of cupping and suggests that six optimal points on the body are all that is required to clean the entire cardiovascular system. The location is first shaved, if necessary, to ensure a tight seal with the cup. The mouth of a cup is placed on the skin at the site chosen for hygema. A tight seal is then created. The traditional method is to burn a small piece of paper or cotton inside the vessel, so that the mouth of the cup clings to the skin. Some practitioners now use a machine instead of the manual cups. Some practitioners still strictly adhere to the prophetic method with the use of fire, both for sterility and the benefits or properties from the element of fire itself that may be present. An additional reason to use fire to create the vacuum in the cup is that there is no danger of pumping out too much blood. Drawing out more blood is not necessarily better for the patient. The cup is left to cling to the skin for a few minutes, then it is lifted off and several very small incisions are made in the skin. The cup is then put back as it was before until the flow of blood subsides. Hygema is considered a form of energy medicine because it has been claimed to unclog purported meridians in the body, and is viewed by some practitioners as a cure for black magic and possession. According to Hadith, adhering to certain rules such as hygema being done on odd-numbered days, during the last half of the lunar calendar, during the warmer months of the year, and never on Wednesdays and Saturdays, will make the therapy more effective. Procedure Cupping has not been studied in large, controlled clinical trials. Part of the reason for that is because it would be difficult to have a control group. Placebo effects can be strong, especially in regards to psychological effect of very large visible marks. Research into wet-slash-dry cupping is mostly negative or of poor quality and with high bias. Cupping is poorly supported by scientific evidence. In their 2008 book Trick or Treatment, Simon Singh and Edzard Ernst write that no evidence exists of any beneficial effects of cupping for any medical condition. A 2011 review found tentative evidence for pain but nothing else. In March 2011, an evidence review for wet cupping concluded that while the majority of systematic reviews and randomized controlled trials suggest a favorable effect of wet cupping on pain, the low quality and small number of trials affects their credibility. For the treatment of cancer, there is no scientific evidence to suggest that cupping confers any health benefits. Any reported benefits are likely due to the placebo effect. Cupping remained a constant in professional medical treatment throughout Europe. It was practiced by such famous physicians as Galen, Paracelsus, and Ambroise Pere. Cupping was also practiced by other practitioners including barbers, surgeons, and bathhouse attendants. Cupping has side effects aside in the form of pain of skin cuts. One potentially serious risk is infection. 
Another possible minor side effect which may occur is lightheadedness post therapy, similar to the sensation one feels when donating blood. Cupping encourages blood flow to the cupped region, one may therefore feel warmer and hotter as a result of vasodilatation taking place and slight sweating may occur. Pregnant women or menstruating women, cancer patients, and patients with bone fractures or muscle spasms are also believed to be contraindicated. Some practitioners suggest that a low risk of blood clotting is possible and therefore walking and staying awake after a procedure is advisable. Cupping is mentioned in the Islamic Hadith. Narrated Ibn Abbas, healing is in three things, a gulp of honey, cupping, and branding with fire. But I forbid my followers to use branding with fire. Narrated Ibn Abbas, the Prophet was cupped on his head for an ailment he was suffering from while he was in a state of Iram at a water place called Lal Jamal. Ibn Abbas further said, Allah's messenger was cupped on his head for unilateral headache while he was in a state of Iram. Evidence It is narrated on the authority of Humaid that Anas B. Malik was asked about the earnings of the cupper. He said, Allah's messenger got himself cupped. His cupper was Abu Taba and he commanded to give him two essays of dates. He talked with the members of his family and they lightened the burden of carriage from him. He said, the best which you take is cupping, or it is the best of your treatments. Practitioners Safety Society and Culture In Islamic Hadith <laughs>